What it do? Uh, that's Glenn opening. <laughs> He's Glenn opening. My bad, Glenn. What up? This deuce. Uh, today's show is going to be jam-packed. Uh, we got Felix Trammell. He's joining us today to talk some Commanders football, talk some D.C., some D.C. football and the importance of, of the RFK site. Um, we also we'll talk a little bit about um, Jay and Dane's pro day. Uh, it was it, it was a good pro day. Um, he showed some nice quick feet. He showed a good release. And these are some of the things that you see on the actual game film. Um, I never look at pro days as something like, oh, wow, I didn't know he could do that. Um, even if he does something that I haven't actually seen on game tape, because I want to be able to see it on game tape first before I see it like at a pro day. Right. If I haven't seen it on game tape, I'm still going to question something that I've never seen that's done at um, a pro day. He had a lot of zip on intermediate passes. I know there is a faction of, of, of folk out there that say he can't throw across the middle. He definitely can. He's done it um uh over these this especially this last year uh, he did it at an accurate accurate rate and he also showed it today he has some anticipation on it um he had uh he missed some throws um the one thing about pro day and the combine which i'm kind of confused about is if you're in shorts and t-shirts there's there, there, there shouldn't be a pass that you shouldn't be leading the receiver there shouldn't be a pass that the receiver has to wait for the football or any comeback or out or in routes or dig routes. Um, because because it, it, you have no pressure, um, you have no one rushing you, uh, y it's it should be a clean throws. It should be able to be clean throws. Even though you may not show it on your game tape, but at the pro days and combines, you should see those things. And um, uh, he had a lot of misses. And as well as the combine, some other pro days, I noticed that with some quarterbacks um, not being able to put the ball where the wide receiver is going in shorts and shirts. And I just kind of see that as a negative on those quarterbacks. I think he pushed the ball one time 60-plus uh, in the air. I think that that one was was kind of short, but he did show he could get the ball down the field. I think he had one down the field. Uh, I forgot receiver it was. Um, it was in stride, bomb down the field, led him right into the end zone. Um, and of course, his weight was always a, a question coming into the combine. Um, I think he weighed in at 210 pounds. A lot of people say he cannot come in at under 200. Um, but I, I am um, curious to see what it is when he started doing his 30 day visits. But hey, man, the guy played almost six years. Uh, I think the last two years he put on 15 pounds. Uh, he he hasn't missed any game. I think he missed one game or half a game, something like that, with the concussion that put him off for the game. But outside of that, the guy's been durable even at that weight. So um, let's make not make too much about how much he weighs and more about what he's able to do on the football field and able to um, produce. But on the other side of that, um, South and Smoke is going to be here, and we're going to look at the death chart and where it stands now after all these signings we've had. So on the other side of this, we're going to have Felix join us, and we're going to talk about we're going to talk some ball. See you on the other side. Benjamin St. Jude, DB for the Washington Commanders. I want to give a big shout out to Red Zone in the Lab Podcast. Welcome back to Red Zone in the Lab Podcast. I am Deuce, and joining me today is Felix Trammell. Did, did, I, did I pronounce that right? Because I was like, oh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Man. <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't hear you, Felix. <laughs> mm mm. I hope it's not me. Let me make sure I'm, I'm uh, because <laughs> that happens sometimes with me. I'm good. <laughs> I 
All right, they said I'm good. Okay, cool. I know sometimes with the stream yard app, sometimes you might gotta drop and then come back. Um, feel you wanna try that. Uh, drop, drop, come back. Um, yeah, man, can't wait to talk with Felix. But um, the pro day. Uh, what's up, Jeff? How you doing, buddy? Appreciate you for stopping in. Scott Harley, oi, what's good, my guy? Um, yep, thank you so much. Yeah, man, stream y'all sometimes. Yeah, acting real funny, man. I don't know. Um, but we gonna get the we we gonna get it going. We gonna get it right. Uh, but yeah, we we're gonna talk about the death chart, um, a little later. But I'm definitely excited. Let me just send this link over. There we go. You hear me now? Yep. There we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. We got love technology. Yeah. To yeah, yeah. answer your question, it's Tremel, but in the south, Tremel. where our family's from, it's Trammel. So it's all good. <laughs> so, um, how you doing today, man? How you been? I've been good, man. I can't complain. How you, how you doing, man? Yeah, hanging tight. We're so glad you can um join us. I know we chopped it up. I think it was what week one. Yeah. Like, yeah. Reach. I was like, man, that was a long time ago. Um, but glad uh, I, I could finally um get you on. I reached out, you answered fairly quickly, and I definitely appreciate you taking this time no um, to join us today. Uh th th did you happen to see um the, the shorts and, 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 and t-shirt performance today from Jaden Daniels? Yeah, I saw it. I and I, I heard your intro and I and I tell people this a lot. Pro days are really just weird, right? Mm -hmm. Um it's more the measurable stuff. And I think the one, the one concern of Jaden was his weight. And when you see six, when you hear six four two ten, that alleviates a lot of issues. Because yeah. if you if you hear anything under two hundred five, you start getting a little worried. Then under two hundred, that's really frail. But six four two ten, that sh that shows a, that shows a frame that can add some muscle and be durable. Um, so I think that was my biggest takeaway of the day. I just want to see what he weighed yeah. in. At. Yeah. Uh, the other stuff is the other stuff, but. I that that checked off the boxes for me for him is just making sure he was you know had the size to handle you know the league. So at 210, I, I that was my favorite part of the day. I mean, I saw montages of completions, I saw montages of uh, incomplete passes. Like pro days are weird. And if you go, if you ever get an opportunity to go to them, um a lot it's a lot of hype, it's a lot of energy. Like especially these bigger schools, LSU, the Texases, the Alabamas, because it's such a production. Everyone's amped because they're trying to they're trying to show the most. So a guy that you've thrown this ten yard out to for for four years, um, all of a sudden he's trying to do all this extra because he's trying to be seen. <laughs> Next thing you know, his timing's off. So you know, so right. take everything with a grain of salt. Like game film matters more than anything. Opponents matter more than anything. So if you see it on film on a Saturday then that's what's going to translate. You know, what's done inside a practice facility in, in new Nike pro gear, it's like whatever. <laughs> so, you know, so everyone's like, oh, this throw is great. Or, oh, this throw was terrible. I'm like, it's it's whatever. You know, <laughs> that analyzation is very little in comparison to the whole into the whole deal that goes into drafting somebody. Most definitely, because even the day I was, I was like, why are the receivers jumping? Like you, you don't have to. You, like there's no reason for you to jump. They did it like six or seven times, which was odd. Like just stay on the ground, catch the ball. But they want to make it look so so. Yeah, like it's, everyone's everyone's trying to show off. You know, you know the old phrase trying to make Sports Center. Yeah, everybody yeah, trying yeah, to make yeah, Sports yeah. Center. Like do what you're supposed to do because the NFL is about being on time and being right, not about the flash. Right. Yeah. So I think that's that happens all the time because especially guys who are just trying to be seen, trying to get drafted. Um, though they try to do a, a little bit too much and then it mm -hmm. throws off everything else, especially in the timing thing, like throwing the ball. It's a little bit different from an NBA pro day and those comp training combines when it's ball and you can control yourself. You know, right. you can't always control a wide receiver as a quarterback and vice versa. Right, right, right. What's up, cuz oh Jeffrey for joining everybody that's in the chat. Appreciate y'all, Jeffrey Scott. Uh Riri says hi Felix. Hey Riri, I haven't um, spoken to her in a while. How you doing? <laughs> Yep, yep. Um, Scott, Jeff. Uh, so let's let's kind of go back. You know, journalism it, it it itself. How did you get on that path of journalism? Well, it's weird. I kind of just hopped into it. Um, 
huge sports guy. I've been, I've, you know, played all through school and whatever. I coached for whatever. I was official for whatever. But it w- it was just an opportunity I jumped at. Like, I was never, and this is funny because I hate writing, but I enjoy writing when it's about this topic and when it's about yeah. sports because, you know, things aside, it's, it's, it's art. And I, I grew up a, a, a trained musician. That was my original job. Okay. So like, that was the thing. And this, this is art with, with your body. This is art with motion. So I kind of just hopped into that way and it just kind of grew from there. And um, it made me see the team in a different perspective because, you know, mm-hmm. you see it as a fan and there's so much emotion mm-hmm. and you step back and see it. You're still connected, but the emotion kind of ebbs and flows a little bit differently when you see the inner workings of everything. Um, so that's kind of how I hopped into it. It was just kind of on a whim. I was like, if somebody's looking for for a um, person to help cover the team, and I was like, I'll, I'll do that. And it just kind of blossomed. So been doing it seven years now so it's it's been a blessing to do and i i never take it for granted um what type of advice do you have for you know some of the other especially like inner city kids that that have this passion for sports because i was kind of like the same way right when i had to write about something it was either about the streets Type of type of story or sports, like because that's just what that, that's what made it comfortable. When even when I read, is that that's the type of things that I like to read. Something that's going to keep me engaged. But what type of advice would you have to those coming up in this in in, in this era that that I kind of want to follow that path? I'm and my current job. I'm an I'm an assistant athletic director in in Virginia at a high school. There are so mm-hmm. many jobs in sports that don't involve being on the field, like. Everyone's like, oh, you see Sunday. I was like, there's so much stuff that leads to Sunday and leads to that moment that those people you never see, but they're so involved. I encourage those look into look into some of those careers, sports management, sports business, how to operate a game. Like most people don't understand like the rules of how to operate a game or basically how to set up a field. Yep. Like it's 12 powers. People don't know that. Like you, you there's stuff you just not used to doing because you've never done it before or you don't pay it any attention so my advice is just look at the nuances of the game because there's so many jobs in sports that don't involve being the person on the court and it's really rewarding it's really fulfilling um it's fun so like i tell you about now my job is absolutely fun yeah. like, kids like me and i was like <laughs> i i cover lacrosse i cover field hockey there's different there's all, all these different ways of expression but you find your nuance in the game. So anybody who, you know, you love the sport, this is the way you stay connected to the sport because very, very few get to go out there and play. Yeah. So there's there's lots to it. So that that would be my advice. Find, find a way, you know, volunteer the game. Like, see how this stuff works. Even a high school football game on a Friday night takes a lot of work and a lot of pre-planning and a lot of this. See how that goes. And then see, because you'll get an enjoyment out of that and then it just moves to the next level. College is just such a pageantry. And then you get to the NFL and it's such a business, but it's so many people that you never see that make it happen. And that that's where you can aspire to be. And you can have a long, fulfilling career in that and never step foot on an NFL field, which, you know, 99% of us will never do. That's as, right. As a football player. So, <laughs> that, so that would be my advice. For sure. Um, what's up? Yam and Yam is coming home from Japan after a few years stint. So oh, wow. glad you get home. Have safe travels. Um, Yam. Uh can't wait to get over here. What's up, Big Sim? Oh, Ree Re- Re- said he's still older. Meet and greet with Santana. <laughs> she, she loves Santana. I, I do owe her that. I do owe yeah. her that. <laughs> Next time I play golf and he pops up, I'm gonna bring it up. I promise you. Um so what's the what's the current vibe like with with the beat writers around Commanders Park since the, the new ownership, the new things that's going on? I know one thing ain't vibing is is like leaks and information. <laughs> <laughs> now I it's a brush of a breath of fresh air. It's um and I when I, when I see the crew and I'm like, you know what? We're not writing about tabloids, we're writing about sports. Like it it used to be we would we would get something and it would be, what is this coming now? 
And a lot of it never got to the football field. And a lot of it was this mess and this off the field and this with the owner and this here and this here and this coach and this player. Like, we, we never got to do sports. So now it's refreshing because you have a, a leader with a vision. He has a clear vision. He let, he let last year play out, which was a little painful for people. But the first thing in leadership is you observe. And he observed. And he saw the mess. And he's like, okay, now I have to reset because I owe this to everybody. And so we saw the reset. The reset has been great because, like you said, there's no leaks. There's not a tell. Like everyone wants to be this person that's like, oh, they're leaning this way. Oh, they're leaning this way. Oh, I got, you know, but they don't. They don't. And it's 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 a new world. So the beat, beat riders were all like, okay, this is great. Like we, we can we can focus on football. Now yeah. we get to have these arguments on who's who what quarterback should they draft. Mm-hmm. Like these are these are the arguments we're having. It's not, oh, I wonder what indictment's gonna drop here mm-hmm. or you know what mess with the government over here like it's 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 different so uh, you you see it being more professional i mean but there's a lot of work to do to get the entire franchise up like the the years of mediocrity and doing it cheaply and doing it ineffectively have to be made up so it's not going to be overnight and i think people need to understand that like it's a business but the business side was jacked up too yeah. Like a lot yeah. was jacked up. Like it wasn't just, oh, we need a few players and a coach and everything will be fine. No. So there's a lot to do. So I think t- people need to understand that, but it's a good group in place. Now you got to let it work. got to let it build. You got to let it foster up. And I think they do have the right ingredients in place to do that. Yeah. I, I can't like just, just outside in. Um, I, I know a few people that's 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 around Commanders Park. Just the the vibe and just the the breath of fresh air. Like there's no tension. Everything is loose. Everyone is happy. Everyone is smiling. Um, just to be in that type of work environment makes your productivity just excel, right? So um, that's 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 definitely good to hear from yeah. the beat rider side for sure. Um, RFK. Um, <laughs> Uh, what is it? The Senate, the Senate uh, passed, voted to pass um, for DC to, to be able to retain, to be able to, what is it, like 99 year lease or, or something right. like that. So it still has to go through the House. And of course, President Biden's that. So it's still a, it's still a little ways to go. Um, but what's, why is the RFK site so, because even Josh Harris knows, um, Roger Goodell knows, Murray Bowser knows. Um. Uh, oh, I can't think of her name. <laughs> the one who was pushing it. Oh, she's gonna be so mad at me because I, I know her person. I cannot forget her name. Um, it, it'll 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 come to me. Um, DC. Uh, Eleanor. Uh, no. Um, um, yeah. So, uh, I don't know if you're watching, uh, Miss Norton, but please forgive me. <laughs> um, she. <clears throat> so, um, like, so what's the importance of bringing the team back to that? particular site teams have a connection to certain places like certain things are their legacy rfk is washington's football legacy like griffin stadium uh, no i was not around you you can hear the old timers talk about it but they never talk about it like they talk about rfk and once you experienced rfk you knew that's where it was supposed to be and i i'm talking about i didn't go to rfk it's out in the 90s So, you know, I'm a kid and, you know, by that time it's kind of like, oh, but then Mm -hmm. it's the it's the place. It's where it's almost like where it's supposed to be. So I think the right people in the right places understand that because there was a time when leadership in the city did not come from the city. So they didn't understand what that meant. And this area, the real DMV, D.C., Maryland and Virginia, not Baltimore. Because I heard a CEO exactly. where it said yeah, Baltimore part of the DMV, the whole bridge collapse. I was like, "Whoa, slow down!" Yeah. But <laughs> it's, it's the understanding that that's 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 kind of our meeting ground. That's where everything is level. Like mm-hmm. you know, the people from Virginia, the people from Maryland, the people from Uptown, the people from Southeast. Everybody understood that was our place, and that's what yeah. RFK is. So I think the right people understand that, um, and. Uh, the owner gets 
is not hated, is not disliked. Like, so they're all the right pieces pieces are in place because there were a lot of pieces to the puzzle and they've all kind of fallen together. The name change had to happen. The ownership had to change. The city council and the mayor had to change because there was all those components that went into it. And then the 30 year lease with Maryland. So there was nothing you could do anyway because you were stuck for 30 years in Maryland. That all happened. Now, that, now that's all falling in place. So I think just the ancestral home of Washington is RFK. So that there's nothing better than that view. And you used to get it on Monday Night Football. They would peek over the Washington Monument, over the Capitol, you would see RFK. Mm -hmm. Like that was the line. That was the skyline. Mm -hmm. That literally which what you would see. And you were like, okay, this is Washington. So I think that everybody in place kind of understands it now. So it's like, okay, we're good. Like we the team needs to come back here. It's where it's it's kind of where it belongs. You've seen the success of the other stadiums that you've built in the city. Nats Park revitalized that um that area down there by Navy Yard. Audi Field only helped to accentuate that. Mm -hmm. um, so, like you see, it's it's working. So mm -hmm. they can do the same thing there. So um, it's it's going to. I I truly believe it'll happen. Um, it may not happen as quick as people think, but it will happen. And yeah. I think the time it takes will be done right versus trying to rush, because you can year by year lease Maryland until a, a good RFK, a uh, good stadium at RFK is built. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, I lived on 19th Street, on 19th and Gale, okay. right down the street. So I know, like, when the cars would come down there blowing a horn, singing a song, stopping, getting out, all excited. And when I was 15, um, somehow my mother was able to give me a, a job to sell, I think it was, like, canned soda. No, it was, it was bottled. Coca-Cola's there. So I was able to experience the stadium bouncing and all that type and plus i went to elliot so the skyline mm -hmm. part you talk about like yeah. it's my oh they're going to school is right there right. I, mean, I went to easton for three days but that's a whole nother story <laughs> three so, days. so so um yeah i definitely understand um you know how much it means to the city just being able to be like front and center and seeing it come down your street as a kid and these people just blowing their horns, honking, getting out the cars, all those type of things. So it was definitely great. Uh, we're going to take a, a quick um, break here, Felix. Um, my co-host on Wednesdays, South and Smoke is going to join us. We're going to talk a little bit about free agency and some of these new rules. But Red Zone Cinema is starting back up this week. Um, I hope you guys can check in and, and, and tap in with. Right after this, we're going to have Bring us south. We go talking free agency. Hey, what up? What up? Here's your boy CeeLo coming to you to introduce a brand new series and, and podcast called Red Zone Cinema Podcast. And it's going to be all about media, uh, film, uh, music, all you know, kind of connected to sports, uh, books as well. And hopefully, you all can join us. You know, family, friends, tell them about it. Let's talk about some uh, some, some pretty interesting and sometimes serious topics that I think we'll all enjoy. Hey, bring yeah, bring your, your you know your four legged you know homies as well, and uh, and we'll have a good time. Come check us out. Welcome back. What's going on, South? Um, let me see. We have some stuff over here. Uh, <laughs> RFK is forever because uh, Revere because you know that's where we won um, the stands. Talk about yeah, the stands, Biden, the atmosphere. Yes, the, and this is very true. It was it was sort of like I'm I'm not from down south. So I, I haven't really experienced small cities and or towns and stuff shutting down for football. But RFK, especially there or between that southeast and northeast side, everything was shut down. Like. Everything was shut down. It wasn't nobody. If you want to go to the Safeway and spend hours, that was the time to go doing a Redskins game. <laughs> no, that's facts. That was out. I grew up in Alexandria. It's the same way. Like you just, you just, you know, everything, everything stopped. So if you just didn't want to deal with it, I use a Cowboy fan. That's when you went to the store. But <laughs> like, but, but like he said, somebody, somebody just commented getting off the metro. That was my first yep. memory. Getting yep. being on that train and then yep. getting off the train with all those people. My first game was a Philadelphia Eagles game in 1990. I still remember it. 
Like, I, I still remember getting off the blue line, like, oh, wow, this is, and everyone walking down that, like, promenade in front of the armory. Like, that was dope. Like, it, 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 it was just there. Like, so, um, it, it's, it, it was the city, like, everything shut down. Like, there was no crime. Like, everything just stopped for three hours, you know? Yeah. <laughs> for sure. I don't know if you heard, buddy, but, um, that has been shot down, so I don't know if the Caps and Wiz is going anywhere anytime soon. Nah, they just announced that they're they're not. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't. That's that's a real bad on Ted's part by not knowing he had a lease till twenty forty seven. Like that that whole thing, like as much money you have, your lawyer should tell you, hey, your lease says you're here till twenty forty seven. Like you. Like that, it was it was just really bad. Like the whole thing is really bad, and he had to come crawling back. But that's another yeah. story. Yeah, he he totally struck out. He he <laughs> is is nasty. Um, welcome south and um, uh, smoke. Glad you guys can tap in. Um, free agency. Um, we just going to talk free agency a little bit. What were so? What was your thought process? And we talked about earlier how you like you like just don't know what's going on. But what was your thought process going into free agency? And now that we're done with those first couple uh waves, like was your was your thought process like, oh yeah, I knew this was gonna happen, or is it like I ain't know none of this was gonna happen? I think we overvalued our roster as fans, as as people attached to the team that no one else had the value of. And that's not to say that we didn't have players that were good. This is this is Adam Peters' team. This is, this, is, this is his team. And he is going to make it in his image. And a lot of the players that we possessed were not in his image. So when I saw that in free agency, I was like, oh, okay. This is not, this is not his vision. That's fine. So you see players that fit his vision. And so I was fine. Like, it was like, okay, this is, if we're going to fully, fully reset, which Washington never actually does, they kind of partially reset and let's, you know, let's change formation. Now, now we're a different team. No, this is a reset. This is a full reset. And we see it. Like I told somebody that maybe 40% of our roster will be here next year. And people kind of looked at me like I was crazy, but, that's how it's trending. I mean, mm-hmm. we're probably going to have one starter on the offensive line from last year, and that was the yeah. only graded starter who should have been there, and that's Cosme. Like, you you got your two interior D tackles, you know, you maybe one linebacker out of out of out of that core, like a third of the secondary. Like you're seeing that mm-hmm. it had to be remade. It had to be remade, and that's what you, that's that's what I saw. I was like, okay. Peters is going to go get his people. And if you notice the signings, the all men smart signings, we didn't throw six years, a hundred million dollars at somebody. Like there's still so much flexibility left. Even when you get your draft class in, you sign in, you still have money there. Yeah. Like it's, it's being done the right way. So before I let the others speak, I'll say this. The one thing that coach Rivera did is he left his team in a great financial situation for the future. And and I'll leave it at that. This it's this team was set up for success financially. So yeah. like yeah. I mean he, he whatever is whatever and that's fine. <laughs> right. Right. Financially this team was built for success because you can see what's looking like in Dallas right now. It's real real bleak. Oh. Real 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 bleak. Mm. And it's going to get bleaker. So mm. we uh, conversely we are looking good. I mean, you can see there's money still sitting here. So if 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 a veteran gets let go, and, oh okay, we can we can bring him in on a on a pretty good deal. Let's do this, and you you see that vision. So I that's I'll give I'll give Coach Rivera that credit. But as far as free agents are concerned, Peter said, "Nah, I I got to I got to make some moves," and yeah. he made some moves. So you got to respect it. Hey, yeah. To that latter point, though, um, as far as Ron leaving us money. I got a buddy I talk to every day, and he swear up and down that NFL left us money. They wouldn't let Ron do but so much, <laughs> wouldn't let because the new ownership and things of that nature. And he kind of 
swayed my thought with that one. But um, as far as free agency, I, I like everything we did. Of course, we all questioned the Mariota, but I'm letting them do what they do. At the end of the day, I did want to see some type of tackle signing. Um, we got some interior guys, you know what I mean, that can come in and compete right now, but I thought we would attack tackle early. Maybe they go, you know what I mean, the Seattle Seahawks way of, drafting two guys one early one mid-round and letting those two guys be your bookends and stuff like that but other than that no one outside of the fan base and and, and things of that nature can tell us that we're doing things the wrong way we, we still got the second most money on the books i think it's what 49 million and some change mm -hmm. compared to the patriots 50 and stuff like that and hey man yeah that's that's where i met with i would have liked for them to you know at least grab one vet tackle but they got a vision that, you know what I mean, I'm just trusting the process. For sure. Um, so what's your biggest um, or most impactful move from free agency, Felix? For me, it's the linebacking core. And I like the, I like the Wagner and the Laval, both, both signings for two different reasons. Bobby Wagner comes from two organizations that are principal in this league. He's gonna he's on he's gonna, he's gonna show leadership and discipline. But Val is just hungry. If you watch him play, he's a violent player. And mm -hmm. Peters likes violent guys. Like if you look at the defenses, like you look at the defensive 49ers, they're violent. They like to hit. Mm -hmm. And Laval's one of those guys. The, the linebacking core was so bad here for the last couple of years. It was covered up, like I mean, you know, to his credit, he he, um, which Jack Del Rio found some ways to tr to try to cover it up. Like Cam Curl, you're a linebacker now. Jamin Davis, you stand here, you stand here. All right, we'll throw another safety in there for us. You're not a linebacker. Like he he found ways to try to make it, but our linebacker core was so deficient that any good team would expose it. So I think those two with Wagner and Laval together, I think that's going to be a new difference in the defense and allows Jamin Davis to do what he does best, which is attack the quarterback, which is what he should be doing anyway. So I think those that that would be the most impactful because the defense had to be revamped. Like the defense was by the end of the end of the season, it was just like, okay, just don't give up 45 today. <laughs> just, 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 you know. If we get 28, we good. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like you were just hoping not to get blown out. So I think right. those would be the two most impactful signings would be the, that pair together. I don't expect Bobby Wagner to be here more than two years, but I expect that spark, that leadership to carry over um, with the guys that are in the unit now because the defense that hasn't had that guy since London Fletcher. London right. Fletcher was the last true right. defensive yep. leader that the Washington franchise has had. Yep. I mean, there's Peter, no I got a question for there. you. Yeah, I got a question for you. Um, I, 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 since we stand on the defensive side of the ball, how do you feel the acquisition of Chen is going to help this defense? It's going to allow Forrest to play closer to the line of scrimmage, which is where he should be. I think we kind of we had a bunch of strong safeties on this mm -hmm. roster, not a true free safety. Chen allows Forrest to play more downhill. And I think Chen can cover the back end, but he also can hit. So I think that's what's going to – that's how he's going to impact the defense. He's going to push Forrest that – Forrest will get to play closer to the line of scrimmage where he's that run stopper, that physical guy, that thumper, and Chen can cover the back end. Because I think – because Curl was never a natural free safety. Forrest was never a natural free safety. Like, you never had somebody who really – they really, really trusted back there. So, and that led to a couple of those plays. And when you get beat over the top and, you're, and they're guys just looking at each other like, what the heck's going on? Because there's no free safety. No one, their eyes weren't trained for it. So I think Chen will, will allow Forrest to push down, which makes him the third linebacker. And Chen can come back and cover and be your, rain, your ranging free safety. But he also can thump too. So I think that will help in, in regards. But I still think they might go for another free safety in the draft just because, mm -hmm. like, they got enough picks to do it. So I think they will try to get another one that's a true cover one, sideline to sideline, free safety. What do you think of um, Benjamin St. Juice? Because I know he was not good last year. So, like, 
do you think that system is going to benefit him or, you know? Like, St. Juice is weird to me. And I've always, <laughs> I've, I've, I've always been very leery on him. And I think part of it is. Oh, no, that's Oh, no, no. He's dope. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other one is Forbes. <laughs> Forbes is a little. Yeah. Forbes. So, um, yeah. I think his technique was just re- so bad last year. So bad. Oh, it was so, so like, bad. And he got Chris worse. Harris was the one guy that was kind of leading him right. And to be fair, he was done wrong. They tried to move into the slot. He was never a slot guy. Like he never had the speed to be anywhere near a slot. Now he should be. But like, like th- th- that's what's so confusing. Yeah. And this is why we care so much about the position coaches now because we didn't care that much with Ron brought in people, and we realized he got high school coaches out there and all that. Like, yeah. What did you see that made you think that he was a good slot corner? Right, he's like, too tall for one. Like Chris, Chris Harris was was the best part of the defense yeah. coaching staff by far. He should have gotten the job, but they didn't want to push. They didn't want to push Jack Del Rio out, whatever. But when 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 Chris Harris had him on the outside with good technique, he's okay. He he he's a grabber. That's his problem. He's a grabber. Don't have him in press man. Let him yeah. be off. Like the the the, the uh, corner you should have had in press man was on the other side, and then you had him and off. Like, they they put people in bad spots. So, St. Juice was always kind of put in a bad spot. Now, the clock is ticking for him because mm-hmm. he is not, you know, he is not regarded by the staff. Like, he wasn't their draft pick. So, and he's coming to the end of his contract. So, he's going to have to boogie and boogie hard because, um, you know, it's just, it's just the leery of the situation. Like, he Everyone knows he grabs, he pulls, you know, he, his eyes are bad. Like he, like you're going to have to really break him down and start with basic stuff. With yeah. And I don't know if the coaching staff will have the patience enough to do that. Now, Emmanuel Forbes is different because he had one year and they're like, okay, we'll give him another chance. Cause he was a first round draft pick, yada, yada, yada. St. Juice don't have that. Like Ooh. it's got to happen and it's got to happen pretty early in training camp for him. Because they're not going to have the patience for it. He's not mm-hmm. one of their guys. So, um, St. Juice, this is weird to me. I never liked the pick, to be honest with you. I just mm-hmm. didn't. I just didn't think he had the moxie. There's a certain moxie of playing corner. Like I never thought he had that. I thought he was just like yeah, a standard. You don't guy. like that. That's not. That's not enough moxie for you. No. Nah, when 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 a receiver <laughs> trips and falls down, and that's a celebration. No. Like, I hate, when cornerback, I hate when cornerbacks do that, man. But, you know, but they got to now, dudes. They don't have. They don't. It's hard to play corner. In it. It's hard to play corner. It, it is, and I and I definitely agree with that. And but Kendall Fuller showed you how you can play corner. Yeah. South is a cornerback. Yeah, but I mean that's a natural thing. Like I don't think St. Juice was ever naturally a corner. He was just a good athlete on a solid defense. So now yeah. in the NFL, it's a little different when it's you know AJ Brown or you know. Like you know, some of these different guys that are animals too, and you're like, oh wow, I can't run with them. Grab fifteen yards. So, so that means to me, you think that they're gonna go corner some somewhere in this draft. I do think I do think they get. A, I do think they go corner. Yeah. There's gonna be a corner. I I agree. Um, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be at least two tackles drafted. Mm-hmm. I see a corner draft, and I see a tight end drafted somewhere in that litany of picks of those first five. That's gonna be a combination of what happens. In my opinion, yeah, I, I definitely agree. What's going on, Widow? That is our Buffalo Bills contributor. <laughs> definitely appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you for um, stopping by. Um, so I agree with you when it comes to the cornerback. Um, we we did uh, our first couple mock drafts the the, the past couple of days, um, and we went corner with thirty six. You know, best player available based on what we need. Um, and then we was able to get um, Keon Coleman with the next pick. That's because we traded back into the first, and we were able to pick up one of those. I don't know. Who was it? Uh, Morgan, I think. So I I, I I do think, like, we have so many positions that we need to fill. We need some athletes. We need some best players that, depending on how to, how to, how to draft fall, if we don't jump back into the first, the best player available – but it, it may be a cornerback and not a tackle. 
the next player may be a, a linebacker or something, and it may not be a tackle. So it's really going to depend how this this draft falls and and the direction that these guys are going to um to take. But for you, Felix, when when it comes to these free agency moves and and I know this is really these two moves is really not looked upon as as great moves for some. Um, you and our dudes. Yeah. We didn't hear the question. Yeah, hey, dude. Yeah, there you go. My bad. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, the the special teams, and and we're going to get into the new rules. Well, a, a couple new um, rules in, in the NFL, but we got, uh, I think, the linebacker from Detroit and another cornerback, I forgot from where, that, you know, they excel on special teams. Like, that's just what they do. And and what we usually do in years past is that we draft these players to play certain positions on offense or defense, and then if they kind of fall out the rotation, we'll put them on special teams and see what they can do. But it looks like this regime took a different approach and they went out and got some people, re-sign Revo, that want to play special teams. Like, if you played football growing up, you had to want to play special teams. Like, special teams, you had to want to do it. Like, what type of signing, like, when you look at this regime and them making those two signings, what, what, what type of direction you really think these guys are going into? Well, there's two ways of looking at it. One way is special teams are very important. We see that. And – um, with this with this new kickoff rule, it's going to be interesting to see. But punts punts really matter. Like yeah. punting's not changing. Like punts really matter. Your gunners, you know, your blockers on the outside. So it's it, that's important. But I also see them building depth. Like this team lacked depth. Like it it was a depth concern. So like you know you got to have bodies because guess what? People get hurt. Seventeen games, people get hurt. Yeah. And, Washington's always been we're good, we're good, and then one person drank, and then it go it goes to heck. So, like I think part it's a lot of special teams, but it's some it's, it's some depth as well. You got to get you got to get a lot of good athletes in there competing all the time. So um, I like the kicker signing. Um, you know, Tress is gonna be Tress. Big Tress is Big Tress is a legend at this point. Yeah. Uh, but you, you had you had to revamp some things in there because it was just some guys who had never done it. And now you're now coaches and, and regimes are looking at kids who play special teams in college. Like, are you playing special teams in college? Some colleges, it's a birthright. Like you you if you're a starter, you're playing special teams. Some places it's a throwaway. So are you doing that as like uh I just gotta I gotta cover now here, blah. Or are you one of those guys in those top programs who are going down there competing on special teams? Because that stuff matters. And if and if we all remember back, that's what Terry McLaurin was supposed to be. Yeah. That's what Terry McLaurin was supposed to be. Yeah. And then he got here. And he got here and was a lot better than expected. And so we turned from a deaf guy to your top receiver in one training camp. So those things can happen. So those, those guys getting a second chance, getting to compete, getting to be deaf. But also show the way they can do on special teams. I, um, I know we signed a corner that is a verge starter, Michael Davis. Um, you know anything about Mike Davis? Uh, you like that signing or anything like that? It it fits it fits the Quinn scheme of defense. If you if you know if we remember the Cowboys defense and we let the Legion of Boom and even the Falcons when he was the head coach. Those are good physical corners, and um, Davis is a is a good physical corner. So he's going to understand the system a little bit better than our guys. So he'll have a leg up in that regard. But it's not a bad signing. I still think they draft a young guy, but that doesn't mean they have to draft a young guy to start day one. And I think that gives them leeway to do that. Um, but Davis is a good guy. He's a good physical corner. Can run. Um, Play, plays that plays that um, that trap zone stuff that Dallas likes to run, or I should say Dan Quinn. So he, he fits the system well. So that's that's just one of those little signs that okay, they they know the system, the chance to compete. And a lot of free agents understood that. Hey, I can come to Washington because I'm going to get a shot. And a lot of guys are just looking for a shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you feel about the new hip drop tackle rule? <laughs> 
As a former <laughs> safety and <in> corner, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I don't know what you do unless you you just got to run at them straight on and hope you get them. Like if let's say for instance, if Mark Andrews is beside me and I've got to get him down because he's on the five yard line, what else can I do? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing else I can do. I'm not. I can't grab a man six six up top and pull him back. I mean, that's all you can do. So I think we're going to add, that's just adding another layer that officials are going to have to judge at the speed of the moment. Some 50 year old guy looking at these super athletes and up flat. Like, come on now. Like, injury, uh, injuries are super, they're unfortunate. It's life. But football at the end of the day is a violent game. Like, mm-hmm. it's not nice. Like, you want to be nice? Go play volleyball. Volleyball is nice. Like, <laughs> football is supposed to be violent. So I mean, I am all for getting rid of head tackles and going after, you know, going after kill shots and all that. that all that's all that's well and good. But this is just going to be really hard to adjudicate. It's another judgment call on an official because, as we see, the more judgment you see, the the worse it gets. That's why we see these quarterback um, roughing the passers. You're just like, come on, like. That's that's football. He got tackled. That's he's a he's a football player. Like it, it's too many judgments and not just enough action, in my opinion. Um, but I mean, I get why they did it. But defenders are just limited. Like it's it's just limited. But it's a dangerous sport. I mean, I could walk out of, walk out of my house and go down the steps and fall and break my leg. Like yeah. it's raining. Like so it can happen. Like. I know we want to protect everybody, but at the end of the day, you can't protect grown men in a contact sport. Yeah, like, you you know, it's, it's, um, it's crazy because I was watching the Jaden Daniels uh, pro day on the SEC network, and they had Roman Hopper, you know, commentating and stuff like that. And and they asked Roman Hopper, like, "What do you think about the new hip drop rule?" And he was like, "What? Like, like what? What is that? Like, it's a tackle, you know? What I mean, stuff like that." So it's like guys that's been in the game that that plays the game at that fast pace, they like, what else can we do? Right. What else can we do? You already can't touch the quarterback. Now, if someone, you know, breaks through the line and they hitting that sideline, what are we supposed to do? Like, just you had, grab you them, take, hold them up. You got to swipe at their ankles. You got to swipe at their ankles. Yeah. 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 So, so you, get what, you get with that play, and I think, I don't know if, I'm trying to think who did it, where, you know, the QB slide thing, and he faked and kept going. That was, that was Kenny Pickett. Kenny yeah, Pickett. and you're just like, okay, like, the, mm-hmm. and then then you get mad when a guy kind of lands on the quarterback when he slides, but it's like that's the play I'm trying to get rid of, like because mm-hmm. if he fake slides and keeps going and I stop and he's stressing the end zone, now it looks like I blew a coverage. So like, mm-hmm. it is so offensively slanted, oh, like yeah. it's. I mean, I'm glad I played safety and stuff 20 years ago. Yeah. Like, I, would hate it. Like, I mean, if, unless I'm standing on the goal line and I get to run straight at you, like, you know, mm-hmm. you're, it's going to happen. Because if he turns, the next thing you know, when I thought I was straight up, he's now at an angle. And so, bam. Like, you're so now I'm taking him down. And it's like, okay, now it's a hip drop just because he turned his shoulders. Like, mm-hmm. what are you supposed to do? Like, it's it's weird. But, I mean. It, it it's a product of you can't hit them high. You don't really want to hit them low because it gets your legs in. So we came to the hips, which is fine. And the only way to anchor was to pull your weight. But the legs are getting caught up under. But I think that's more of a turf issue than a, than a tackle. That's the, yeah, yeah. I think yep. more fields going back to turf would prevent a lot of those injuries because the cleats would give out on grass. They don't give out on turf. They just don't. That's just how oh, turf is designed. So – um, I, I think I'd be an advocate more of let's get back to more grass because that allows those cleats to stop being stuck in the turf and the legs can clear. So they just end up getting pulled down instead of their cleat stuck in the turf. And then a, ser- a more serious injury happens. And, and, and Widow was right. I think the actual number is 294, 294 last year of these of these tackles, which was around one um per game but i think the number that are more afraid that they're what would lead to like the data that the 20 percent of those resulted in in injuries and then you had injury to a prominent player in mark andrews 
You know, so like when those type of injuries happen to those players that are so dependent upon, then you really start to, you know, do this. But, but, um, but yeah, but, but Felix, we definitely, but <clears throat> before you go, mm-hmm. we ask everyone this Drake May or Jaden Daniels? <sighs> Daniels for me, um, he played in the SEC. And I, th- and I think that matters when, in the grand scheme of life, he, he was eight, what was he, eight and four, nine and three in the SEC, and and played Florida State too, and that means he's competing at a high level because he's playing against high level competition. So for me, I would go Daniels, but I wouldn't be mad with May. But I'm not a McCarthy guy, and any I would I would be fine with Penix, but if you start start talking about Nix, we're gonna have a whole another conversation. <laughs> you have a whole nother conversation. Like I said, like I have this. Depending on who they, who they pick, I, I I get you. I I trust Adam, whatever. But I'm even gonna have to walk out to the to, to my door. It's gonna be for one player. Walk outside. Gonna be for another player. Walk around the block a couple times for another player. So it depends who he picks. I'm gonna be okay. I might need a day or two or take a walk around the block, but. You know, all these pieces, all, all, you know, depending on which way you guys, not going to have me all super excited, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. But, uh, Phoebe, definitely. I got one definitely more for him. I got one more for him. Well, he, 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 got, he, got, he got, he got, he got, okay, okay go ahead, go ahead. So, go ahead. We, okay. we definitely appreciate you for stopping by, buddy. We're definitely going to reach out again. Like, really, yeah, stay let me know. I enjoy home. myself. I'll definitely come back. Definitely yeah. come back. All right. Appreciate, appreciate you, man. Up. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for having me. Thank you, bro. Yeah, we go. Yep. Yep. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's true. Like what it was saying. Like, and and I think it it it, is because of the rule change, and it's another Mm -hmm. rule to sway to the offense side. It's it's like this big, you know, blue blah about it or whatever. But I I just don't think it's it's that much of a because it it doesn't happen that often. It has increased over the couple years, but it's the thing where, you know. When, when first of all, you gotta fix your angles, right? <laughs> like you can't keep taking poor angles. Like you gotta, you gotta fix your angles for one. For two, when when, when you when you jump when you jumping on you grabbing them, it's that motion where it's like a a yank, and just like you said, the legs is getting caught up under it. That's what they're gonna be looking for. You like put like using your hip to thrust to the ground and pull them down in this motion. And, and then think if you coming at them sideways. The only way for their legs to go is sideways. You know what I'm saying? And that's where the injuries come in. But you just have to learn angles. And, and somebody was saying, well, if they run it in front of you, like how are you supposed to bring – like if you get – it was like grabbing by their jersey. If you get that close to grabbing by their jersey, just jump on their legs. Like pull them down that way. You might get carried or whatever. So hopefully you got some pursuit coming depending on who – that player is, you know, you got somebody like King Harry, AJ Brown, one of those dudes, like you, 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 you might be on sports center or whatever, but I just, I, I don't, I don't think it's a, it's a, it's a huge, huge deal, man. I just, you know, I just don't stop it. Turn. We're we, we not doing that. <laughs> Enjoy the trigger, bro. JJ mm-hmm. is a trigger, but no, nah, like, but like, like the part about, a player running in front of you, an offensive player running in front of you. I, I think, like, a lot of guys thinking, like, you know what I mean, if I lay all out and, like, try to clip a, you know what I mean, like, what if they score on that? You know what I mean? Now people going to be looking like, oh, man, you could have kept walking them down, this, that, and the third. So it's just going to be very tricky, man. I, I know the NFL looked at the last two years of – sorry, my house phone ringing. The last two years of – um. Of scoring going down, house, yeah, house man, phone, man. yeah, that's my house phone, man. I got why house is it a house phone? phone? Oh yeah, I mean we 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 you got it with the internet, like, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to get a phone with it, man. You, you can tell them no. You need a landline. Look, you this, don't you get, tell them no. <laughs> you never this, know, bro. This is U R E. This is U U R E. Like e, e, man, U R E. We we get at it. You are you are you are e you are e. I am U-R-E. not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. You got a house phone. I'm not hey, man, you never know when you need that landline, man. We have some trying times, brothers. So no, no, no. Like I just um like I I don't think that you know, like, yeah, we're gonna see those highlights of or mm-hmm. certain flags being thrown and stuff like that, but 
I think the NFL looked at scoring was down, and I hope they ain't look at it as far as like this hip drop tackle is the reason scoring is down. But scoring has dropped the last two seasons compared to the previous four seasons. So I just think they're just trying to find ways to make it more innovative, man. People love high-scoring games and stuff like that. Nobody want to cut a game on in 16-13, and that's the final score. People want to see, you know, they want to get their bang for their buck at the end of the day. And I know the NFL, you know what I mean? It's a business at the end of the day. So we, we all knew this stuff was coming, man. Man. I don't yeah, know. I just like, like when it comes to this specific tackle, um, because I like just know the, these the referees gonna just, mess just, up that call, dudes. I just know the referees. Yeah, it's like the, the, they they just they go they gonna call them they gonna call penalty, and it's not isn't it shouldn't have been, and you're gonna be sitting at home like. <laughs> but it's it's just not a like for me to to smoke's point. It's just like with the day, how many times it happened. This this and that. Like if if they keep on that trajectory and keep it line and 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 definitely might not happen like i, I don't know man like I, I don't know i don't know i know I, i've kind of heard that you know they did it because of scoring now different stuff like that but i i, I don't know a really say it's not here that's so gang gang <laughs> we'll see, we might as well play I will be getting dragged on yet. the timeline now. I got a house <laughs> phone. Everybody heard it. It's okay. <laughs> I hope Mo's watching this. First, you wanted to trade back. Come on, then, come on. Now you Tom. got a house phone. What's next, Mo? <laughs> hey, man, I'm vintage, bro. I'm always, you know what I mean? I'm vintage. <laughs> next week, you're going to say, you know what? I seen somebody's pro day and you want them as a as the quarterback and i'm like hey, man, man I, i'm trusting the process bro whoever ap pick at two one three six nine ten i'm trusting it bro it better I'm not be it. nine or ten <laughs> it better I know not a lot be of the fan base ten. going like like you said earlier you know i'm, I'm kind of straddling in the fence but i'm 90 percent trusting the process no matter we all have our favorites in the deep down the side. I, I watched DT and them, uh, Caleb and Caleb podcast last night, and they say, DT, you got to let us know the one that you want. And he like, Adam mm-hmm. Peters, like, I, 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 I can't select nobody because it doesn't matter. I'm the same way, day. actually. So I don't have a, yeah. I don't have a Jaden Daniels or Drake May narrative. My whole mm-hmm. thing is, can they play ball? Like, is it are they gonna fit what they want to do? Mm-hmm. If yes, get them. I don't care unless it's like so, somebody weird like Spencer Rattler. We really like don't that. know what Cliff is looking for. We really don't know. We can go off of what we've seen in the past, but <laughs> Dre, you would not think Baker to JJ too. Oh. He's right. <laughs> 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 but you would think Baker and Kyler Murray are two different quarterbacks, but he had both. You would think Baker and <laughs> are two different quarterbacks. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I don't know what Cliff is looking for this go around, man. You know what I mean? Man, look, man. Like the fence is the safest place to be right now in command line. Yes, I've been on the fence. I've always been on the fence. The I like that. Place. I like it over there. I, I, I got a residence on the fence. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Let's see, man. Um, Let's look at this. Uh, let's, before we get out of here, let's take a look at um this depth chart. Okay. They put out a depth chart? I mean, it's going to be all, like, new people on there. <laughs> I mean, it's this our lads. Yeah, they probably got uh, Cornelius Lucas starting. Let me see if I can blow it up a little bit. Yeah. I don't know Let's if see. I can. Let's no, I got it. Yeah. I mean, I'm good on my end. I can, I can mm-hmm. see it. All right. So, split out, they got um, Perry, Dax. Oh, he's still on the roster? Davion <laughs> Davis. I, I have no idea who that is. <laughs> who is Davion Davis? I have no idea. <laughs> Probably a futures guy, a futures mm-hmm. contract guy, probably. Um, Deami Brown, Mitchell Tinsley, Tremaine Bryson, Bryson Tremaine, uh, Jahan Dawson, Jameson, Jameson Crowder, Cashmere Island. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Out of these guys, I see two players that I'm comfortable with saying, you know what, they're going to make the roster. Um, I'm surprised they got this. <laughs> Jahan lined up in slot right now, though. I am surprised at that. Yeah. Um, 
Jameson's crowd, he's only there to teach Cashman I know how to field punts. So I don't mm-hmm. think he's gonna make the team. I um, think he's gonna make the team, dude. I think they gave him a press conference. They gave everybody a press conference. I mean, with the new kickoff, I mean, dude, you're gonna want a guy that, that can catch it and get a good yeah, but I don't, start. I don't want him getting lapped at the 10 yard line. Not, not at me, least not, he got I'm, not, the I'm not talking Jameson, I'm just talking like Cashmere, like. Hopefully he can get a good start. Like if he catch the ball inside the twenty, and uh, the Thank the you, Tally. kickoff team can't start until he catch the ball. Hopefully he can at least get us to the thirty-five. Bro, like crowd is only there to teach this guy how to catch. All right, mm-hmm. um, all right. Oh, wide, rec- oh, Lord. wide receiver room. <laughs> uh, I think they add. I, I if they, I think they add at least. Um, one in a draft, I wouldn't be surprised if they add two wide receivers in a draft. Um, mm-hmm. especially if they don't bring in here another vet guy that's going to make the someone that's going to make the team. Um, I, I don't, I won't be surprised if they go two wide receivers, uh, in the draft because Terry is is the vet that's still producing, so we don't actually need a vet guy in, in, in a sense. Um, you have him, you have Crowder that's probably going to be there. Um, throughout all the training camp, and you bring in two young guys to compete. Um, Diami, he 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 probably can be successful in his offense, but again, are you going to extend him because he's going into his fourth year? So, you know, you, you got to kind of look to the future. I mean, what do you guys think? It, it needs some help. It needs help in this room. Like, uh, it don't look good on paper, but like I said, <laughs> like, back, I don't know yeah. what Cliff is looking for. I don't know what yeah. Cliff is looking for. Hey, they need to send Diami to Seattle. Oh, for <laughs> Sam. <laughs> All right, that's what we all would want. All right, so left, <laughs> left top, but I got Braden Daniels, Cornelius Lucas, oh, Alex Akingbalu. That's nasty. Uh, on the right side, I got Wiley and Trent Scott. Like the second guys is better than the first guys. Yeah, I think yeah. Scott Trent is definitely better than Andrew Wiley and Cornelius Lucas is. Probably better than Braden Daniels, but again, a lot of people for the we reached rounds on Braden Daniels, so I, I, I don't know what he's going to look like coming into this year. But I think I think we end up drafting two two rookies that we're going to look to start between day one and um, day two. I think we got. I, I think we get one rookie that starts on one of the sides. I don't know if we get two. Yeah, I mean, a comment was made like, "Yeah, I'm comfortable with Lucas or Trent Scott at left tackle." Yeah. I mean, that's what they—that's what he said. So, I don't know. Man. This has to be a heavy offensive draft, bro. Like, I'm—I'm I'm looking. I'm like, man. But keep going. Yeah, man. We got we got uh, Tyler Biotis, Michael Dieter, Dieter, how you pronounce it? Julian Good Jones. I don't know who that is. Um. He was on Philadelphia's practice squad. Mm, okay. uh, the dude, Davion Davis, was drafted last year by the 49ers. I don't know if he was undrafted or what, but it had San Fran 23. He was asking about him. So I think the center position is pretty good. Solid. I think the, Solid. Yeah, I think the um, the left guard, Nick Allegretti, Rick Stromberg, Mason Brooks, you got Sam Cosme, uh, and Chris Paul. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't think they're going to go guard. I think, I think your guard and your center. I think your inside O lineman. It might be some battles in there. Maybe Ricky yeah. can battle Allegretti, but I think your inside O lineman is 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 set. I think you can, you can kind of do the the fifty three in August with your inside O lineman. I wonder yeah. if uh, Dieter get a shot at one of the guards. But well, we know the right guard is solidified, but. In that competition, because he's playing Ooh. guard and center. Oh, uh, Michael Dieter. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? it's a lot of competition. It's five guys. Yeah, yeah. for that for, for for that left guard spot. But we hope it's good competition. <laughs> What's yeah. up, scouts? Yeah, yeah Def Child Tigers look horrible, man. What's up, Seneca? Would you all draft the wild? Yes, I would. BPA if it's a wide receiver, definitely. Um, most definitely. All right, tight end Zach Ertz, which I expect for him to be tight end two going into the season. Um, I do not expect him to be tight end two once we get to the middle of the year. I just do not. Um, and I hope not. Um, if we draft a tight end, 
Um, a draft a tight end to start. You got Zach there. You got Bates. Uh, I think Bates is going to, you know, be that blocking tight end. But if you get someone like um, uh, Ben Sanat, Jaheim, like those guys, like he's not a, a great blocker, mm-hmm. but he's he 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 can do. You know what I mean? Um, John may be in trouble, and I don't know what they're gonna do about Cole Turner and um, Armani Rogers. Um, hopefully, it was one of these things where the coaches just didn't do enough to coach him up. So, which I think. Where, where's the uh, uh, other guy? Um, Curtis Hodges. Yeah. Which <laughs> uh, kind got his number? So he ain't even on the team. Oh man. We paid the most. I think he. We paid the most money for him. Undrafted free agent last year. Yep. Mm. So oh, that Mariota looks. Oh man, they, <laughs> they could have just put him at number two. I understand. Yeah. Like they could have just put him at two. Yeah, we got Mariota and Jake Fromm, and they yeah, said we're hey. going to carry four, which I'm not surprised. Yeah, Jake Fromm was a winner. He's a winner. That's right. Jake Fromm is a winner. He's a winner, just like J.J. McCarthy. Think about that. Right. Well, no, well, no, wait. Jake Fromm came from the SEC. It's different. <laughs> wow. Well, they winners. They're winners. Um, they win games. <laughs> well, they got Eckler starting. Okay. So, but this, this is our last. Yeah, this we know that's going to be B-Rob. That's yeah. going to be B-Rob. So, where, where do you all think – I know we, we're going to draft the quarterback. Do you think you think they'll go two rookies or you think they'll look at – I don't think they'll look at another vet. I, I, I um, asked that earlier. Maybe um, an undrafted quarterback. Heard me. Yeah, I asked that earlier today. I don't think nobody heard me. I'm like, they they take one at two, but your fifth, sixth, seventh round, will they take another one? I don't know. I don't know about fifth, sixth round. I think undrafted. Yeah, we probably might, we might put some money out for mm-hmm. another guy. You draft somebody in the fifth round, like uh, that's too close. Sam how yeah we ain't trying to go through that I mean the RG3 <laughs> thing too um I ain't trying to go through that so yeah I wouldn't mind having two young guys because like the third quarterback man like Jake from like I mean hey, I mean, mean Logan Thomas I mean, I mean David Blau only 28 so if we need an emergency guy nah, just bring Logan Thomas back David Blau. <laughs> nah, we bring got Logan David Blau he's 28 man he put tight end and quarterback. Uh, nah, nah, uh, nah, uh, nah, uh, nah, uh, JJ has a ceiling of Jake Fromm. Oh my gosh, that's nasty, Scouts. Scouts hates JJ. Um, all right, yeah. So we, I think, two young quarterbacks. All right, running backs. Uh, B Rob. We got Eckler. We got C Rod. I think we add another re- uh cornerback, and I wouldn't be surprised if we add one. On day on day two, another uh, corner or running back. I'm sorry, running back. Mm. On day third round, maybe fourth round, depending who there. Like Bookie like was there in our draft last night. Yeah, uh, Bookie was there last night when we did it. We got him. So I don't know, man. We 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 need that home run hit. I mean, Austin only has a, a one year deal. Um, you know, he's getting a little older. He had the injury last year that he kind of played through. For the most part, so you get another young guy in there. You know they could take three of uh, uh, four running backs on a fifty-three. Um, out of um, instead of for the future, any of uh, like second or well, I'm gonna say third round picks, Deuce and so to move back. Jahan is at two, Telly. Okay, to 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 move back, say six spots with our third round pick to get a full are y'all willing to do that yeah 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 yeah. i think that's what we did yesterday okay Uh, no dax milm is still on the roster so when when you see this this is reserve wide receiver so it's like terry jahan diami that's how it kind of like flows on this first one so um peter said there would be four quarterbacks in camp two running backs and I don't think we need three running backs. I mean, I know we're going to add some guys, some undrafted, um, uh, for sure. But I, I think it's just going to be some guys that play the second and third preseason game. All right, ends. Uh, this is where it gets uh, like I think we're, gonna do, we're gonna do some some three four and some four three. Some but solid I think we dudes. Got, 
Yeah, I mean, I I think we got <laughs> everything we solid. need. Yeah, yeah, we got everything we need for both bases. I mean, the three four, the four three, the nickel, the the buffer. Like we have, we 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 have the players for it. Um, I think we still need to say well, but let's let's do the end. So Armstrong, Fowler, FA, Joshua Pryor, um, Cleland, Cleland, Farrell. KJ Henry, Andre Jones. So we I don't I still don't think we have a number one. Um Cleveland, I Cleveland started like every game last year for San Francisco, but it was yeah. rotation with, with Gregory yeah, they, and Young. Yeah, they had heavy rotation in San Fran. But I think we'll do the same here because that's how Quinn is. He heavy yeah. rotation. I just don't mm-hmm. think we have we don't have a uh, number one. I don't think we yeah, have a number, number one. one. Yeah. Um I think we need a number one as far as edge rushers. I think D tackle along with the interior O line is probably the most set on uh, on, on the team. Mm-hmm. The Rump Payne Island Mathis Ridgeway um, Potato 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 <laughs> Potato. Um, but the whole Mathis thing, like, who is this guy? Like, if Tiandre Tiandre, what's his name? Tiandre Swift. If he's there, like uh, bottom of the sweat sweat. sweat. That's Tiandre yeah. Sweat. If we do pick From up a big fourth, Texas, right? Yeah. Texas. If we mm-hmm. pick up a fourth or something, and he there, I don't know, man. They might. I don't know, man. I mean, I seen box that dude going like mid second, man. I'm like, ooh, for a one two down guy. Oh no. Nah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, crazy. but hold on. Let me ask a question. When, like, because you was talking three four four three, when we drafted Payne, we were still in a thirty four, right? No. No, no, no. no. When we drafted I thought- Allen. No, no. When we drafted Allen, we was we went into the fourth. Because you remember, you Payne sure? came. Yeah, Payne I came thought, after Allen. I thought I thought we didn't go back to a four three until Ron came. Mm-mm. Nah, it was it was it, it was before Ron. Yeah, Jay. I don't even know. Let me see. Who was the D coordinator? Because uh, it was um Minuski. Because Manesky. I'm trying to think, I'm, I'm trying to think of like certain lineups mm-hmm. where I would see Payne in the middle, Allen at like your five technique, and even outside of that, they would have Ryan Kerrigan. Yeah, that was probably the three three five or the uh, you know when they tried when they did those certain packages. Because mm-hmm. remember, you know what? You may be right because because remember, Payne was coming from one in the zero technique at Alabama, mm-hmm. and um. And he came here, played a little bit of it, but he kind he didn't really excel until those last two years before he got his deal. Yeah. When we went, we had went when Ron got here. So you may like be right. More pressure with right. guys like uh yeah, because Kurgan Kurgan only had one year yeah. in the four three. Mm-hmm. When he it when he had seen. like what nine sacks or something like that coming off the bench. Because mm-hmm. it seemed like we got more left. interior pressure when like when Payne first second year when we had the spell of Matt Ioannidis and Tim Settle yeah. type stuff. I, I, that, I don't think he wants to good. play it though. Mm-hmm. I don't think he want uh, you know, but they got I mean they, they got Mathis and Ridgeway to mm-hmm. play that nose. Uh, I like Ridgeway, big Vader. So linebackers, we got um Jamin, we got Keandre, we got Luvu, uh Anthony Pittman. I think he's more of a special teams guy. Yeah, that's the guy um, we got from Detroit, right? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Bobby Wagner. And on the commander site, they got um they got Chen as an outside linebacker. Outside linebacker, yep. So mm-hmm. the linebackers may be set, but I would still like them to bring in a middle linebacker to groom, have him and Luvu for years to come. And that's usually what San Fran does. Like they usually have two or three stud linebackers. Mm-hmm. Um, we got St. Juice, Pierre James, that we just, I think that's another special teams dude from Pittsburgh. Yeah, we, yeah, we saw Uh, Castro Fields, just, I don't know how he's still on the roster. Nick Whiteside, I think he's the Merlin guy. We got to have at least a couple Merlin guys. Um, Michael Davis, Forbes, uh, Dino. Yeah. Yeah, he monogamy. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna be special teams too. But he Bino, his, his nickname Bino. And yeah, then you got Christian Noah Holmes. and James Pierre are gonna be like probably 
I'm gonna say your two gunners off the break. I'm I don't know, Noah. I don't know. Noah might like he has a lot of reps. No, 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 no. That's Michael Davis. That's Michael yeah, Davis. Yeah, Michael Davis. Davis. Noah had like that. Like they um he scored yeah, a touchdown yeah. off a block field goal or block punt last year, week one. Noah uh Noah so I, I, whatever. I name. definitely think we need another cornerback. A star. Oh, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Um, force, and if they got Chim, so Chin, if they got force at strong save, but again, this is our lads. I didn't, I, I didn't pull up the command. Maybe we can look real quick, but they got Percy, Jeremy Reeves. Like, no go. Listen, I don't want to see Percy still. on the field. <laughs> I seen all enough. this is just no go, man. I seen enough of Percy. All this is no go. Yeah, man. Everybody in the chats, man. Wherever you are. Please uh, hit that thumbs up, hearts, wherever you are. Uh, get that algorithm moving. I've seen enough of Percy's jersey last year, dudes. Slim ain't going to like that jersey. one, though. Slim ain't going to like I mean, that one. I mean, he, 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 Slim admitted it yesterday. He was like, man, hey, <laughs> his chance for starting is, may have passed him by. Smoke. Mm. I saw the Hopefully back of his jersey. Hopefully he could be a good, a good player. A good many player times. <laughs> but yeah, I'll safety room. I'm not, I don't like it. I don't like the safety room. Um. We definitely need to add some people, especially if Chen is moving the linebacker mm -hmm. and our cornerbacks. Nickelback, they got Quan Martin. I hope he stays there at the nickel. Um, Kablu Kelly and uh, Mandel, D'Angelo Mandel. I don't know who these guys are. Another guy from San Fran. Yeah, so we got some holes. We got some holes. Yeah, tons nine of picks, them. Nine picks right now. Tons um, of I feel like uh, nine picks. Out of the They'll probably six fill this roster out though after the draft because there's a bunch of free agents left over. That's what I'm looking at. That oh, he's still on the team stuff. too. Shaka Tony, he's suspended. He's still on the yeah. team. So. He June ain't nobody stuff, like. It's, he ain't changing. It's, it's gonna be some stuff that happened with rosters like that June first cut that deadline and things of that nature. So I'm not too worried about. It. I feel like if they like, I think Do said if they hit on two of the six uh, top 100s. I'm saying, man, they need to hit on three or four. That's tough, out of the man. Top 100. That's tough, it man. is tough. It's tough. But I'm saying, like, just coming in and being contributors. Or we just went through the uh, the roster breakdown, bro. Like <laughs> Adam Peters got. I know. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not, it's not a one year. Like we got a. And we. I know it's we, not a one we got year a ton thing. of picks. Not, we got a ton of money, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. It's not a one year thing, man. Those picks don't ever, they don't hit like, I mean, we want them to. We want all nine of our picks to hit, but the numbers say it's going to be probably about two, two or yeah, three. Yeah, 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 y'all right. Y'all right. I'm, I'm just hoping, yeah, man, that we can at least hit on actually, three or it should four. Be more. But like, if you get seven picks, you you looking at two, right? At least two. Two of them, you get two hits, that'd be a good draft. You know, three that are, that's a heavy contributor. So we got what, nine picks? So we should be three. Like the the bar should be three. The reason I say least. three or four because right now we need a quarterback to four hit. Crazy. We need a left tackle to hit. We need a right tackle to hit. You know what I'm saying? Like we may want an additional middle linebacker and and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. We 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 need some of these guys to just come in day one studs, man. Four is a lot. So this this John got Jeremy Chen at strong safety. Which one are you looking at now? It's ESPN. Okay. Man, they gonna put. Well, I thought the commanders put it out there already that he's an outside linebacker. Like yeah, so I'm about 11, to pull it. So. Man, Joe Witt and them is playing is playing games. Uh, that's probably why. I think they like to mix yeah. and match. You think trying to fake people out? Yeah, I, I really want Defoe as as free man. Like I've seen that guy get sideline to sideline. I see him take great angles coming up around the scrimmage from free safety. So. Um, I, I I definitely hope they can do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I think him and Chin should be the two safeties in this drive. Like if, if, if you, I'm Kim. coming out first down, I'm I'm putting him and Chin. Go see low from 1995. His little picture from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> like he on his way to. Uh, Prom. He, he got his coat on the back, like yeah. Oh, he like... <laughs> <laughs> That's that nineteen ninety eight prom, man. <laughs> oh man, this woo, look at this death chart. My goodness, wait a minute. They don't want. They don't want to put no that's, one on that. Death that's, chart. that's the that's the official website. 
Yeah, this it's the unofficial death chop though. Ain't got nobody on this job. We got Terry, Deami, Chris Paul, Sam, Andrew Y, Trent Scott, Bates, Tur- look, they ain't yeah, even got them over here. <laughs> Deami, James Cole. How are you that bad that you can't be number one when they don't even have the number like somebody over there? You know what I'm mm. Oh man. That's nasty. Well, they, 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 they don't even have no, nah, they only have everybody. They don't, they don't have, have the, the new guys on the team. Yeah. On the roster yet. Look how bare this is though. Time starts now to start filling that stuff in, man. Then you yeah. know, next well, year fella. you add on to it. The year after that, you add on to it. So Who was, yeah, that? Somebody was posting that they had him at um maybe it's here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here we go. I saw Trail got a date, uh Joe Milton. Oh, <laughs> oh man, nasty. Not, no, they got they got German <laughs> Yeah, but he <laughs> like he ran around for like four minutes and then and then he, he the lost it. And- yeah, like, ball like ball he was playing a uh, jackpot. <laughs> yeah, so they got Jeremy jackpot. Chen as safety on the on the roster. So where they get that outside linebacker from? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Let's see who else safety and. Hey fellas, I'm gonna let you guys wrap up the show without me because I gotta run. But all right, yeah, we, we we about to get out of here. All right, appreciate yourself. Um, appreciate all of you for uh joining. Separate needs for once. That man Copper could dance not a hack the top shot. Oh gosh. Um, yeah, man. Any 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 last words? Nah, man. I uh, enjoyed the show today, man. You know what I mean? Every Wednesday, check us out. But Deuce is six, seven days a week, so continue to follow Deuce, man. Hit that like, subscribe <laughs> button. Continue to follow Deuce, man. Like he, He's doing his thing, man. So I appreciate everything you do, bro. Most definitely. Appreciate all of you for watching. We know your time is very valuable for you to spend it with us. We definitely, definitely appreciate you. Remember, do it because you love it, not because it loves you. One beat, one sound, one heart.